This video is made possible by a grant from the Educational Video Fund of Esperanto USA. For more information, check out the link in the video description below. Hi there. Today, we're looking at a few different Esperanto words which, when translated into English, would have something to do with copying or copies of something. We're going to start off, though, with a quick little plug for my latest children's book, The Marriage of the Muffin Man, or La Nupto del Muffin Vendisto. It's a bilingual book. It's in English and in Esperanto. And what you're looking at right now is Exemplo de Exemplero, an example of a copy of a book. Exemplero, that's the word for a copy of a book. Wouldn't it be copio? No, it would not. It is exemplero. We'll look at it in more detail in a moment, but first I want to distinguish something for you. This is an exemplero. This, if you bought it on Amazon today, and maybe you should, if you bought it today, it would look just like this. But I have something else with me. Do you know what this is? It looks pretty similar, but it's a little bit different. We'll zoom in here and let you see. Can you read what it says there? Not for resale. This is a proof copy of the book. The publisher sent this to me and said, hey, are the colors right? I mean, maybe your computer monitor is lying to you that the blue is a little bit deeper or lighter than what you think it is. Are the pages all spaced and centered the way you want it to? This is my way of checking it over, a proof copy. The word for proof copy in Esperanto, prov exemplero. So provo is to try something or to test something. So prov exemplero is a proof copy. All right, we're already a few words into our first page of vocab. Exemplero, a copy of a book or a magazine or an album of something. Uh, exemplo de exemplero, and I say exemplo because I want you to note that th th those are similar words, but they're different words. Uh, exemplero is not like an arrow of exemplo. It's not a particle of an example. It's a totally separate root. I don't know of a word in English that's similar to exemplero that we can use, so you just have to learn it. Here's how I learned it. I thought of the English word exemplar. Maybe you know exemplary is, oh, what an exemplary, what an excellent thing that is, what a laudable or praiseworthy thing. So an exemplar is the thing that is exemplary, that is an example, that is worth making copies, exemplaroi, of. So, if you, oh, what a great work of literature. Let's make exemplaroi of the exemplar. And we already talked about prov, exemplaro is a proof copy. Now we'll go to Copio or copii. Copii is a verb, first and foremost, whereas exemplero is a noun, first and foremost. There's no exemplary to be a copy of a book. There's, no, that's a noun. This is first and foremost a verb. And we can leave or stick in a photo in front of it. Uh, if you're specifically talking about a photocopying machine or a photocopy of something, um, you can put photo in there. I like to remember it that way because it helps keep me from using copii more often than I should, as my go-to for everything. A copy of a book, copying someone's actions and stuff. No, it's really just for making a physical copy of something. That is its primary use as a verb. Copio is a copy. And it's a copy as opposed to an original. Look at this example sentence and I'll show you what I mean. Copio la covrilon de la originala exemplero. Copy the cover of the original copy. So let's say I took the Marriage of the Muffin Man book here and I ran it through a Xerox machine. And it made a copy of the copy of the book. Do you see how it's originala, the original copy? Can a copy be an original? Well, here it can. You can have an exemplaro that is an original of something. There's nothing more original. I mean, does the book exist in my head or, what, or is it in the pages? It's not a photocopy of the book. This is the book, even though it's called a copy in English. So you can have an exemplero that's an originala. But by definition, a copio cannot be an originalo, uh, which is an original. Okay? If that helps you clarify the difference there uh, that exists between the two. So... Copii is, another way to think of it, is to Xerox it. Think of it that way, because you are really just running it through a machine to create another copy real quick. And I don't use photocopy eloy uh, very often. I don't use photocopiers. What I use most of the time is a scanner. I'll scan things and then email it. In today's society, that's how you do it. So the word to use for that is not necessarily copii, but scani. Scani is to make an electronic copy, to digitalize something to make a digital copy. And Scani has other uses. Now, a doctor can scan you for diseases or x-ray you or check your blood pressure and all that. So there's 
Scani has other meanings and, and uh, uh, sides to it than just scanning a book on the scanner. But Scani is the word for that. And you would say a oh, scanajo, perhaps for, a, oh, that's a, a, a scanned item of something. So Scani is a good word to know in uh, connection with kopi'i. Here's a word I don't use very often, but it's a good word to know. It's one to have at your disposal. Transcribi. That is to transcribe or to copy down something. Mi transcribis la poemon kiun li dictis. I transcribed the poem which he dictated. And I'm slipping in this little bonus vocab word here. Dicti is to dictate something, to say aloud with the intention of it being copied down. So I transcribed the poem. These two words you're not going to use very often, but good to know. Maybe if you're a curator of a museum, you might use these more. Uh, reproducti is to reproduce or to make a reproduction of something. Iu reproductis la fabellon en canto. Somebody reproduced the fable in a song. Oh, they heard this story passed down orally from generation to generations and wrote a country song that in encapsulated the story there. So that was a reproduction of the original ancient story that was used. And one thing you might reproducti is a facsimilo. That is a facsimile. Not a common word in English, but a good one to know. It's an exact reproduction or replica of an old thing. You wouldn't make a facsimile of The Marriage of the Muffin Man. You would just order another copy of it. But you might make a facsimile of the original copy of, of Hamlet or the first folio edition or something. Uh, that's where you're really trying to capture every aspect of it, even the color of the, the tea-stained leave ink, sort of like, you're really trying to get the entire thing exactly reproduced just the way it was. That would be a facsimile of a thing, not what you would create with a photocopier. Photocopiers don't make this. So those are some copies. Now let's look at another way to copy something. It's sort of the act of copying or imitating something. What's the word? It is imiti. Uh, that's to copy or imitate someone. Now, we don't use imitate that often. If I said, um, hey, I'm going to do a little dance, then you copy me. You'd probably say copy me. You wouldn't say, you imitate me then. You, you wouldn't say that. But in, in Esperanto, that should be your go-to word is imiti. So, imitu mean, um, copy me. Li imitis shian exemplon kayachetis exempleron. He imitated her example and bought a copy of the book. Simii is pretty rare, but good to know. I've seen enough hits for it in, in different literature uh, that are examples of it, that it's good to know that simii is to ape someone or something, to crudely or rudely copy. If your little brother or sister is always running around trying to be just like you and, you know, trying to act like you or, you know, cross their arms just like you're, you're crossing your arms, like, just look up to your example, they're aping you. Or another variation of aping someone is if they're making fun of you by kind of like, mockingly trying to do their version of you, they might be doing it to evoke uh, laughter, or they might just be doing it because they just want to be like you. So simii is an artistic way of expressing imitation. Now there are three P words that are all forms of imitation, sort of the good, the bad, and the funny, I guess is how you could look at it. And they are parodii is to parody something, to jokingly or mockingly copy something. So SNL skits, those are uh, parodies. So parodio, and make sure you note there's two I's in the infinitive. It's not parodi, it's parodii. Next, we have a very rare one probably for most of you, to pastiche. Pastiche is to lovingly or honoringly imitate something, sort of an homage you'd make. Let's say you love the stories of uh, Sherlock Holmes, and you've studied them so well that you're actually able to write a Sherlock Holmes novel of your own in the style of Arthur Conan Doyle himself. That would be a pastiche. You're doing your own kind of take on that author. And a way to remember pastiche is the word for to pastiche. Are you itching for a past work or for more of a past author? Itching for a past thing? Make a pasticho. Itching for the past? Pasticho. It's, you know, sates that nostalgia that you might have for a particular author. Finally, we have the ugly, the bad one. Plagiati. It's uh, to plagiarize, to dishonestly copy, to steal something and then pass it off as your own. That, that is plagiati. Li plagiati smian verco, and he plagiarized my work of art. And a way to remember plagiati in the exact spelling, because it's not exactly plagiarizo or plagiarizi. It's, it's different enough that you need to make sure you know how to spell it here. Plagi autoron per plagiato. To plague an author by way of plagiarism. Plagi is to plague. So plagi autoron plagiato 
plagiato, that is plagiarism. Down here we have a couple words that are sort of lightly related, but I'm going to put them in here just because when I looked in my dictionary for anything to do with copy, they said, oh, well, a clean copy would be netta or netto. Clean copy? Oh, you mean like a, a final draft compared to a rough draft. So that's really how we would look at these words uh, in English, but I suppose maybe in Britain or something they say a clean copy or a, an unfinished copy of something. Uh, Draft is probably the best way, though. Malneta is a rough draft. It's still working out the details. There's notes and scribble marks all over it. And then netta, that is, mm, we figured it out. Uh, it's all finalized, and this is the last uh, version of it. The final version or final copy is netta. And that goes along with the idea of, you know, your net profits compared to your gross profits and all those things. I'm not an accountant. I don't know all that. But la netta texto ocupas quardec pagoin. The final draft text took up 40 pages for, for the book. Now, let's look at a few sentences that utilize the words I just taught you in order to kind of recapitulate them and lock them into your brain. Li presis exempleroin de la libro. He printed or published copies of the book. Li reproductis facsimilon de la libro. He reproduced a facsimile of the book or an a exact replica or a copy of the book. Li copiis pagion de la libro. He copied a page of the book. He made a copy of a single particular page of the book. Li imitis la stilon de la libro. He imitated the style of the book. Did he do it jokingly in a, in a skit or a comedy sketch? What would that be? Parodii. Did he do it and not tell anyone that he's totally stealing these, this style or this way of doing it from someone else, that would be plagiati. To plague an out author, plagiatoro, plagiati. Or did he imitate the style lovingly, honoringly, homagingly, not in some sort of sneaky way or a mean, uh, spirited way? What would that be? Oh, well, I'm itching for the past work of that author. It's a past icho. So, those are ways he could imitate the style. Finally, li transcribis kelkain frasoin de la libro. He transcribed several sentences from the book or of the book. He jotted down or copied down several uh, sentences there. He didn't make a photocopy. He actually, handwrittenly, uh, wrote down some sentences that really stood out to him while he was reading the book. Those are some words for copying. Now, I plan on making another video soon that has to do with maybe actor forms of being a, a copy or a look-alike or a, like a stunt double of someone or to resemble something. Those are different words. These are enough words for just today. So copy them down in your head and start using them. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.